It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's weekly media roundup, 5.45 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden. I'll take you through the next 15 minutes of the jam-packed show that includes uh, the latest details on this past weekend's riots uh, in Keene. Also, uh, break down Brattleboro's new town manager hire. This time it's for real. And uh, we'll get you breaking news on the latest in the Fairpoint workers' strike now into its second week. Plus, we've got a bevy of upcoming weekend events. We'll get you BHS TV's weather report and much, much more. So stick with us right here on 545. Right now, Ruth. Uh who is the festival coordinator is on site here uh, and is being, uh, uh, well, she's not letting me do my job and to report to you. She would not like me to tell you what is going on at Keene State College. Family-friendly event, the footprint of Keene Pumpkin Festival is 100% safe. That. Welcome back to this October 24th, 2014 edition of 545 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden. Now, that's just some of the footage that went viral last weekend as alcohol-induced riots during Keene's annual Pumpkin Festival led to more than 50 arrests and 300 calls to police, drawing the attention of national news outlets like the Boston Globe, who captured the night's most notable image of a drunken college student gathering uh, with students standing atop a parked car after managing to flip it over on the side of the street. Now, at a press conference, held early this week, officials tried to make some sense of the causeless commotion. I am gravely concerned about the unruly, unacceptable, unlawful, disturbing behavior that was displayed on the streets of our city on Saturday. I was out there, I witnessed it myself. We have to come together as a community and find a mutual solution to these issues. The damage was disturbing. I think that's an understatement. The conduct was disturbing. It is far too early to determine what the future of the Pumpkin Fest is going to be. That is going to be the responsibility of the organizers and the Keene City Council as they assess the events of this year and the future of the festival and determine what that future is to be. Thanks to uh, my often co-host and uh, BCTV volunteer Joe Bushy for getting that footage from the press conference, which you can find on his YouTube channel, Brattleboro News, all one word. And speaking of my good friend Joe, he's across the street as we speak, getting the camera set up to prepare for the annual Davenport Day Dinner, which is going on at the American Legion and features some speakers you might have heard of, like uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, Governor Peter Shumlin, also be uh, Treasurer Beth Pierce, Attorney General Bill Sorrell, and Secretary of State Jim condos there. We'll get you all that footage next week. Again, part of that Davenport dinner. And with the governor's visit to town, his Republican challenger, Scott Millen, was out on the streets just across from this here 230 Main Street uh, Municipal Center, giving us a chance to get an interview there. I think uh, we need to look beyond a two-year cycle and look more strategically at what's important for Vermont. And the big problem we have coming down the road is uh, demographic change. If we look 20 years out right now, predictions are Population in Vermont over 65 is going to more than double. Population of folks between 25 and 65 is actually going to shrink by about 20%. So we really need to think as a community about how we're going to change that. I have this very creative idea, free college education for everybody. I think it's going to brand Vermont as a place where young families, uh, new employers are going to want to come, and it's going to be a big game changer. All right, uh, we're going to move on now with that into today's top headline. After more than a year of searching, two last-minute pullouts and a hefty dose of public hemming and hawing, the select board announced last night that Peter Elwell, son of the longtime Brat TM Corky Elwell and current town manager of the municipality of Palm Beach, Florida, would be officially stepping into the role of Brattleboro Town Manager, a decision, according to board member Kate O'Connor, that's something area residents can get officially excited about. I think when he gets here, everyone's going to find somebody who's very enthusiastic about the job, 
Um, his heart is into living here. He's making a choice to come and live here because he wants to, to come here and come back and be part of the community again. So I think we have a wonderful, wonderful person coming to be our town manager. That footage from last night's special select board meeting uh, with uh, hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez on the cameras and BCTV content manager Jeff Mastriani uh, up in the booth directing. It's all available to stream on BCTV's website already, brattleboro.tv.org. Get the full details on Brattleboro's new town manager, or uh, we'll get you caught up on all the happenings with our 545 Live Rewind in Time, taking a look right now. Barb Sondag, the town manager, has been offered and has accepted a position as city administrator in Olivet, Missouri. Uh, what I have to report here tonight is that uh, that search ultimately was unsuccessful. The board met in executive session and we chose seven people. We had a final contract that was going to be presented here in open session. Uh, I expected the candidate to be here, and like I say, two hours ago at 4 o'clock, he changed his mind. I move to approve the employment agreement uh, between the town of Brattleboro and Peter Wellwell for the period January 20, 2015 to June 30, 2019. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? That carries 5-0. All right, next up is promised time to check in with the Fairpoint strike news here. And for that, back into the newsroom we go with some 1,800 Fairpoint employees across Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont remain without a paycheck. On strike, as contract negotiations continue to stall. Contract negotiations that began back in April of this year, with local reps uh, for the union citing the current contract proposed by Fairpoint Management is well below the accepted industry standard, while top officials for the Tri-State Communications Corporation continue to allege that union negotiators have failed to put forward any meaningful compromises. Now, for more on this, we uh, took our cameras out to Main Street once more uh, to get the latest details uh, from some of the um, workers on strike protesting outside Brattleboro's downtown office. Let's take a look. The union recognizes that, there, that in today's world there have to be some concessions made, and we're willing to make concessions. The company just has been unwilling to bargain. I'll tell you, the support in Brattleboro is outstanding. I've never, it's, it's, it's warms my heart to sit out here. When you sit out here for 10 hours a day and you get beeps all day and thumbs up and people bringing you food and coffee and just, it makes you feel really good about yourself and what you're fighting for. Thanks in addition to BCTV volunteer James Bansleben for getting uh, some of that footage uh, of the strike from downtown along with uh, quite an extensive stock footage library he's putting together as well. All right, with that uh, time to widen our reach uh, beyond Brattleboro, of course the B and BCTV does stand for Brattleboro, but there's actually seven other towns we serve including Vernon, Guilford, Emerson, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica, and Vernon is the town we head to next. Back into the newsroom we go. Uh, as Vernon Select Board Chair Patty O'Donnell continues to make headlines after the Wyndham County Sheriff's Office filed an unofficial obstruction of justice document released to the Brattleboro Reformer, alleging that the Vernon Board Chair attempted to intervene in a DUI case involving a neighbor. A series of communications O'Donnell contests were regarding unprofessional conduct on the part of the arresting officer, who, according to O'Donnell's secondhand account, drew his gun while making the arrest in question. And while the Sheriff's Office and O'Donnell remain at odds, the controversy has been enough to draw crowds of concerned residents to the board's recent meetings uh, in this Monday's case, forcing the board to move the meeting off-site and away from BCTV's cameras, a move that drew its own share of criticism as many of the town's residents continue to demand accountability on the part of their elected officials. We're going to call this uh, select board meeting to order um, because of the crowd that we have here, so everybody will have a seat. We're actually going to move the meeting out to the other room. Um, but we had to call it to order in here because this is where it was a, um, a warrant for. So. Now this latest conflict comes following Vernon's move to disband their own police force in favor of a cheaper service package from the Wyndham County Sheriff's Office. All right, next up, it's election season. And with that, of course, uh, there comes a bevy of BCTV coverage from all of our hardworking volunteers um, with programs on both Channel 8 and Channel 10 uh, this coming week, uh, presenting a variety of viewpoints on the season's hottest topics uh, with the ever-popular uh, Vermont Workers Center candidate forum from BCTV producer 
Kip Tewksbury among those, and one we'll take a highlight look at right now. So um, I want to thank the, all the candidates for coming out tonight and the audience for coming um, and listening to the folks who would like to represent you in Montpelier. I think we're really lucky in Wyndham County to have such an engaged group of candidates, to have so many candidates who wanted to come. You can find that VWC forum from uh, this October with Wyndham County legislative hopefuls uh, from hardworking BCTV volunteer Kip Tewksbury, who uh, got some assistance from BCTV producer Marie Dominguez as well to put that program on. It's all available at brattleboroughtv.org. Now, there's also a myriad of other election season videos that can be found online and on the channel, Channel 10, our government and education sister channel, just two clicks up, including yesterday's voter forum in Putney, Liberty Union candidate debate hosted by Tim Johnson, and much, much more. All right, we're going to touch base with BCTV's weekly calendar coverage in a moment, but first, one of a handful of invasive species currently wreaking havoc on the hillsides, riverbanks, backyards, and gardens of the Green Mountain State Buckthorn has made an enemy in the Putney Mountain Association, spreading its fell roots across the organization's namesake summit. But rather than uh, unsuccessfully facing the thorny foe with traditional tractor mowing this year, association members have implemented a new plan, utilizing the help of some unlikely candidates to tackle the problem, a local contingent of sheep. For more on the remarkable story, we turn to 545 Live correspondent Greg McAllister. The views from Putney Mountain are incredible, but only because a constant war has been waged against a persistent enemy, the odious buckthorn shrub, a wily invasive that threatens to conquer the mountaintop and block the view. For years, Faithful trail stewards have cut the buckthorn back, but it just keeps on coming. So this year a new strategy has been adopted, sheep. 38 sheep have been on the mountain for the last two and a half weeks, chewing on buckthorn. All right, with that time to take a look at this weekend's upcoming events, it's our BCTV video calendar section. It's all sponsored by the Brattleboro Savings and Loan as their generous contributions to the station each year help us uh, take an in-depth look at some of the area's uh, upcoming events, and this weekend boasts plenty of them. Uh, now, uh, we'll start uh, by talking about Paul Winter, who uh, makes his return to Brattleboro. He'll be at the Latches concert uh, tomorrow, Saturday night at 7.30 p.m., and we are going to be recording that for BCTV's purposes, so look for that in the coming weeks as well. In addition, uh, tomorrow from 3 to 5.30 p.m. at the Marlboro Graduate Center, you can check out the Electric Vehicle Fair. Uh, this is a uh, an event dubbed Taking Charge of Our Transportation, uh, and it'll include uh, demonstrations of some of the industry's top electric cars, presentations, and more, again at the Marlboro Graduate Center, 3 to 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. All right, and with that, time to move ahead and take a look at our weather this weekend. This is all courtesy of uh, the High School's Morning News Advisory Broadcast crew at BUHS TV. Take it away, guys. What uh, does this weekend's weather look like? Tomorrow it's going to get better with a, um, hold on, yeah, there you go, partly cloudy and a uh, high 61 and low 43, but then it's going to get bad again, all rainy, high 52, low 37, so plan your activities for Saturday. Back to the desk. All right, that does it for another edition of 545 Live. Thanks for checking in with us. We'll be back next week, Friday, 545 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on BCTV Channel 8. And in the interim, you can find all our 545 Live videos, complete episodes, uh, web specials, and more at 545 Live's landing page at brattleborotv.org slash 545 Live, right in that sequence. All right, uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. In the meantime, thanks for watching. that inciting these people is a good idea, I am going to pull the plug on you because you are here as a guest of King Pumpkin Festival and I assigned you this spot. You heard it here first, everybody. Do not alarm our guests. Thank you. When you report the news, when you report the reality, the people in charge want to shut you down.